Okay, what we're going to do is demonstrate how you check for cracks in an engine block to make sure it's sound. I have a few blocks I'm getting prepared to bring up to the um, machine shop to have Babbitt put in. So I want to make sure there's sound blocks before I waste the time of having it done. So what this is, this is a special contraption. These are available from some of the uh, parts vendors. It's a steel plate and a rubber gasket that covers over all of the water outlets, but it exposes all of the inner uh, combustion chamber portions of the block. And all, of course, this is the water jacket all around here. So what we'll do is we put air pressure in it, about 30 pounds or so, and then simple, the same as a, uh, a man checking for gas leaks in your home, you just take uh, soapy water and run it around all the surfaces that you want to check and see if you see any bubbles coming out. So that's what we're doing now. That looks good. Occasionally you will find a crack in a cylinder wall. Usually uh, you can tell in some cases before you even take an engine down if, if it had been leaking you'd have some telltale signs of rust. You could usually see a crack if it's open wide enough. But it's the little sneaky ones that uh, sometimes get around the valve seats. I had one block that I had to turn away. It already had a seat in it, but it had a crack in it that extended beyond the seat and little air bubbles started coming up in there and then in due time being usually on the exhaust seats. And what would happen there would be if you put it back into service, eventually that water would keep quenching, rustling away the seat, and the seat would eventually pop out. It is very difficult uh, to repair any of the internal portions of the, of the combustion area except for the, the bores. On the bore, it's a very simple task. You just bore it out and put a solid sleeve into it. That will seal up any of the, any of the cracks in the walls as long as it didn't extend beyond it. And if it did, those could be stitched if, it, if the crack went beyond the, the wall. But the seats, because of the change in temperature and whatnot, many times stitching is not a successful way to go. Usually the, the block is pretty well scrapped when you, when, you, when you have a crack seat. Okay, I see nothing here. We'll see if we can flip it around and see into the exhaust ports. Right now we check the, uh, the valve ports and the cylinder walls. They seem to be pretty good. We're going to look down into the, uh, the valve chambers and holes. And we're also going to look up here. This is the water jacket. It only goes down this far. So there is a possibility of a crack in here that would leak water. Flashlight. Okay, well, see if we can get. Oh, we'll have to. good. Okay.
Yeah, this block has been boiled out and it's also been sandblasted. So most of everything has been cleaned out, but usually when you first take an engine apart, you'd usually get a telltale sign if you had a crack, because you'd have a lot of rust built up around it. The only other place is in here now. Standing back up again. Actually, what we're looking for is is bubbles. I really don't want to see any. <laughs> now everything looks pretty good in here. As I said, all the work I've done so far with all the cleaning and all the machining and so forth. I've never seen any telltale signs of rust in it, so that in itself was pretty good. Alright, we'll just dry this up a little bit and we'll work on the other block. Okay, what we've got here is another block. We're going to check the cracks. There is a visible crack in it right now, but if it was invisible, the device I'm going to use now would show it up real easy. Uh, this is not, it's not being pressurized. All this is is a magnetic detector. I use two permanent magnets. They also have devices that are electromagnets. They put them across the crack and they put this powder on it and it, and it, and it will light up. We'll see what happens here. But what you let me see take the flashlight, hold it on there. Might be able to get them to build up better in another way. What happens is you have two different fields here. I'm gonna try the magnets in a different spot and see if it shows up a little bit better. Can you see the way that lit up? Can you see the valley in there? Yep, sure, yeah. You've got two different separate pieces of metal and the, the mag magnetic lines of force stop at that point and they reverse. So that shows up the crack nice and easy. Mm. And now we'll put the, uh, the plates back on it and we'll do an air test with it. And you should see the bubbles coming out of this spot. Okay, uh, what we have here now is we've got the seal plates on and the air gauge. <laughs> we got a leak around the pipe. <laughs> you can see the bubbles. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, you saw what it looked like when we put the, the uh, dust on it. You saw the crack. Now, here's what it will look like with the soap bubbles. Okay. You can't miss that. Alrighty. Yeah. Oh, actually, this did I explain stitching before? All right. This this can be in fact. Uh, this engine belongs to a friend that I did another block for, and he's going to take a chance with this and have this stitched. These cracks can be repaired. They take little cast iron plugs long tapered plugs, special taps, and they drill along the, seam, the, the crack and they keep inserting the little plugs in, one, one touching the other. They'll go from one end of the crack to the other. They're tapered and they will bind in there nice like a pipe. It's like a pipe thread. 
and that usually does a successful crack. Although sometimes the metal here is because of sand cast shifts and so forth, uh, it may not be able to be repaired. So we'll send it out and see if this can be done. If it can, then we'll continue on with the rest of the repair of the engine. All right, if my friend does want to repair this, I'll just go this extra length and see if there's any possible cracks in the seats. How's it look? Not, no new bubbles coming up. That's old, right? Yeah. Yeah, you'd see them like you saw that you right. fresh. They they really bubble. I don't say they're good. Let's try along the rest of this. We'll hit this part again. We'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. That's about it. Alright, since we're going to send this block out for repair and we will have it rebuilt, I'll just point out a few more things to you what to look for when you're doing an engine like this. Okay, uh, this is that same block we saw that we had the crack in, and my friend decided he was going to have it repaired, so he will have this stitched. But what is the condition of the rest of the block? Is it worthwhile rebuilding it? So you give it a careful examination, I'll give you a rough idea of what to look for. I measured the bore, and it's already 20 thousandths oversize, so that is still in pretty good shape. You can bore one of these blocks successfully up to 125 thousandths. The car I'm driving is 100 thousandths, and the one I'm rebuilding, the other one back there, is going to go to 100 thousandths. So at 20 thousandths, you've got plenty of meat in here to remove. They'll prob this one will probably bore till about uh, 30 or 40, and I'll stop there. Now you look at the condition of the valve seats. You can see a lot of pitting and rust in here. A lot of pitting and rust in here. Well, this is common because of head gasket leaks in the center. Same thing will occur here during the, the, the center of the, of the head gaskets. Well, these are intakes and these are exhausts. These four. And they're pretty rough. They've been leaking for quite... Usually the exhaust will be rougher because of the the heat that's into them, uh, the acids created by the water that's coming into the block and just sitting there every time you shut up the engine off you've got this moisture laying in there so that's what takes its toll but nowadays with the uh, with the methan ethanol gasoline uh, it's been a common practice to replace all of these seats with uh, insert seats I'll, I'll bring you over to the other block and show that to you. Now it's plain to see this block has all inserts in it, intakes and exhausts. They're nice and sharp now because this has been decked and they've lost the original uh, 45 degree seat. And this would be very nice to cut new with a, uh, with a valve tool to cut new seats in this. There'll be no problem there. And let me, I'll show you what a valve seat looks like. That one's sealed up. Oh, there it is. Okay. That's what a valve seat looks like. You would have this done at a machine shop. They have a special machine that will cut a nice clean hole in there and then they'll have a guide device 
and they'll actually hammer it into place with a little small sludge hammer. And these are hardened seats and they can withstand the uh, the problems that ethanol gas has brought about. The old seats were just plain cast iron, there was no seat in here and uh, these will eventually erode and they get wider and wider and wider. So the seats are, are a good deal. And then also you want to look what all what I also, I also found on this, you want to look at all the threads when you're working with the, with the engine, you run a, a tap through all the holes and a die over all the bolts and I discovered this is a bad stud hole so this will have to have an, a helicoil installed or this can possibly be drilled out, tapped to a special stud which is available these are 7 sixteenths and they have a stud that is 7 sixteenths in diameter but the bottom portion is half inch. I like to use those best of all rather than the helicoils. And what else do we look at? Uh, so the bore is good and also the deck you notice the pitting and all the irregularities here this is a, a will have to be decked. That other block you were looking at before had been decked. It, it's the same as grinding a cylinder head. They do the same thing with the block. They mount the block on this machine and they take a pass over it. Of course, your pistons will stick out a little bit further, but uh, that's of no consequence. I'll show you a cylinder head and show you why that's no problem. All right, this is a typical Model A head. You'll notice that it's not flat that you have these squish quench areas that have quite a recess into it. The only possible time that you'll probably run into trouble if you've had the, the block decked too far and the head cut down too far. And what I would advise you to do is, that's the rear, that's the front, put the head down, put a few studs in just for guide, guidance without a head gasket and turn the engine over and see if the pistons hit the head. If you see the head move, you have to take a little uh, effort to uh, possibly remove a little bit, remove the pistons and shave a few thousands off of those. Mm. But, uh, or put in, uh, get, get a new head that has a larger recess. I don't know if any machine shops can fly cut these. I imagine they could, but you could also take a little trim off the inside of this so that the pistons wouldn't hit because when they even though they may not hit you want to do this without the gasket and if, if as long as they don't hit with the uh, with no gasket you have the thickness of the head gasket and the pistons will never expand that far in the rods but if, if they do uh, you want to make sure you have to do something because the, 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 the rods and the pistons do grow a little bit as they, you know, as they get hot. So you want to do something with, with, the, with the chambers. And then and naturally the, the head usually, the surface gets worse than the block. So you want to make sure that you surface the, have the head, head, head surfaced. So that's about ready. <clears throat> this is about ready to go out for uh, for some machine work, and we'll see what we do when we, when we get it back. We'll bring it up to our shop that does babbling work and have uh, babbits put in the main bearings, and we'll start from there, start collecting parts and assembling it. And that's about it. So, uh, anytime you're contemplating rebuilding an engine, make sure you give it a darn good inspection first before you waste a lot of money doing things that you, you know, uh, items that you should have taken care of that you did not. And that's about it.